Yes. So the question that was posted here on, on X by, the, uh, by Ruby, uh, she asked, where exactly is the sun taking us? And then I thought that was a really good question to ask you, one of the <laughs> most expert uh, individuals, most brilliant minds, answering these kind of questions from, from our space. So where exactly is the sun taking us, Catherine? As you, as you know, we live inside the Milky Way galaxy, mm -hmm. and the galaxy has a center, and the sun is moving around the center of the galaxy, Yeah, and it is 25,000 light years. Oh my gosh, I have the answer behind me. Look, here we are. <laughs> There's the center of our galaxy, which we, our galaxy does have these arms. Yeah. And if you go 25,000 light years away from the center, our sun moves around the center. And I'm trying to, I think it takes 200 million years to go around. So it's that, going. That's where we're going. It's going around the, that galaxy, so to, in, in other words, that. No, our galaxy. We are inside this. This is our galaxy. The whole thing is our galaxy. This is the Milky Way galaxy. We live inside here. And the, there's a center of the Milky Way galaxy. And the sun is moving around the center of the galaxy. And where is the galaxy? Is the galaxy moving also? The entire galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy? This yeah. Whole thing, this whole thing is the Milky Way galaxy. Yeah, yeah, we're moving. Um, first of all, we have, we're a, we're a pretty big galaxy. We weigh a trillion times as much as the sun, the entire galaxy does. And we have a neighbor that's about the same mass. And the two of us are going to merge. We're heading towards each other. Wow. So that's the Andromeda galaxy, and we're going to merge. And what will happen there? Will we, will I have like a twin waiting for me in the Andromeda galaxy? <laughs> well, so it's not a twin, but it's, it's, it's a big one, yeah, with stars. and it's, So yeah, we're going to merge, and then I'll become one giant uh, beast. We're big already. We're going to get a bigger when we merge with this other guy. And have, have we seen that before with other galaxies where they already like connect together? And, oh, yeah. And what happened there? Was there, was there like a, any like planet collisions or chaos? Or was it just like very harmonious? Because it seems like just connecting two galaxies seems a bit chaotic, no? <laughs> the, uh, the, the whole way galaxy formation works involves merge, mergers. We start with small objects that weigh about a million times as much as the sun, or even smaller. And they merge together to make a bigger thing. And then, then it picks up more, and all these merging galaxies happening all the time. In fact, even inside the Milky this is our big Milky Way, right? Can you see my mouse? Yep. No, your mouse, your mouse I can't see it, but I, if you're referring to the one in the middle, then yes. So you Just see behind you. you. Yep. Arrow. No. Oh, you don't see an arrow. Oh. <laughs> Ah, that's why you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so uh, inside the Milky Way, we have dwarf galaxies. Okay, but they're on the outer part of, of well, not, not even, that's not even true. They don't have to be that far. But on the other side of the center of the galaxy, there's a small dwarf galaxy called uh, Sagittarius Dwarf. That thing is being eaten by the Milky Way. So we are gobbling up the dwarf galaxies. In fact, what we see are streams of stars from the other side of this, the galactic center that come towards us. And you can see those, that stream of stars. Hello, everyone, and thank you for allowing me to interrupt this episode. I have a huge announcement that I'll be sharing with you just now. My first book ever is out now called The Time Is Now, a guide to honor your time on Earth. This was a two-year project that's been in the works. It's a tough love guide to honor your time on Earth. This book will show you how to reclaim your time and energy for what truly matters. Click the link in the show notes and you're going to see also the link to the domain here, timeisnowbook.com. Order a copy, order a copy for your loved ones and I'm so excited for you to dive into it. Thank you. And the sky is never static, right? But it's interesting because, well, while we're moving, I remember because I just did a, a trip with my friends and we were able to see like this, the, 
night sky. Like I've never seen it so clear. I think we had the asteroid, asteroid, uh, like the we we were able to see so many like asteroids, uh, just flying, and we thought they were aliens. But so my kids won't won't see, or maybe their kids won't see the same stars that we do, right? Because everything's just constantly moving. Oh well, yeah, but there's time scales. It depends. The things that are that are that are close to us because we have day and night, right, and, and so on, or the time of year. So things that are close enough, we see those changes. You can see them on, from one day to the next. But things that are far away, they're so far away that our location compared to them remains unchanged over even human lifespans. So, so the closer ones, yeah, they look like they're moving, but the, the farther ones, no. Whoa, it's just. We see the same constellations that the ancients did, right? Yeah. So there, we, there you go. <laughs> that was that's, you go. that's the answer we were looking for. It just it seems that you've spent your career unraveling these, you know, for me they're secrets. You know, I'm very naive in terms of the space. That's why I'm hosting you. I'm so I'm I'm honored. But there is also you know these secrets of dark energy, dark matter, the Big Bang. When you step back and face the sheer scale of it all, just how big everything is and just how immense and some people say just uh, overwhelming, 